What do I need to do inside my mind to stop myself from cursing somebody out? It happens a lot. And what do we need to do inside our minds? Because that right there is key to the answer. There's something inside our minds that we need to do to stop ourselves when we want to react a certain way, whether it is verbally or physically. Welcome to Journey to Joy Live, a podcast to promote wellness, resilience, and joy while providing mental health awareness and breaking down the stigma of mental illness in the Black community. I'm your host, Dr. N. Joy, and this week I bring to you episode 54 What do I need to do inside my mind to stop myself from cursing somebody out? Yes, that has happened to (laughs) everybody at least once where you've wanted to snap or tell somebody off or curse them out or say some choice words when you are just not feeling it or when your emotions take over. Honestly, this topic was not my idea, somebody asked me this. I was standing at a table at a mental health fair and somebody came up to my table and said, what do I need to do inside my mind to stop myself from cursing somebody out? I said, you know what? That's a great question. And that is a great podcast topic. So here I go with this topic. What do I need to do inside my mind to stop myself from cursing somebody out? It happens a lot. And what do we need to do inside our minds? Because that right there is key to the answer. There's something inside our minds that we need to do to stop ourselves when we want to react a certain way, whether it is verbally or physically. Of course, I'm talking about verbally here because cursing somebody out is verbally. And more than likely, you can use these techniques if you have some physical aggression as well. But the key here is to recognize that you may have a lack of control or you may have some emotions that pop up and that there needs to be something that changes so that you will stop and not react so suddenly to someone or to a trigger. The key here is knowing what your triggers are. What is gonna make you to the point where you might curse somebody out or to the point where you might tell somebody off? What are your triggers? Do you know your triggers? More than likely, it's disrespect. A lot of people, when they feel disrespected, they're gonna tell you off. When you feel disrespected, you're going to curse somebody out. You're going to feel some kind of way and react some kind of way. You might lose your cool or lose your calm if you're feeling disrespected. Now, think about disrespect. They may have said something. Maybe it's their words that they use, what they said. Maybe it wasn't even their words. Maybe it was their tone and how they said it. Or maybe it was who they said Who said it? Like maybe somebody else could say that thing, but just because this particular person said it, now you feel disrespected. Is it their fault completely that you feel disrespected? Disrespect comes from your perception that you were disrespected. Think about that. Think about the last time you felt disrespected. Was, did it have anything to do with what you were thinking about in your mind when they said whatever they said? And I know times when I felt disrespected, I've thought to myself, okay, do I really have to react? Do I really need to feel disrespected? Am I really disrespected by this? Sometimes we have to let things go just to have our relationship continue to be healthy and to continue to stay in that relationship. And if you feel like you're losing pieces of yourself because you're letting it go, I mean, that's different. But feeling disrespected, think about it. Maybe it is something that you can change about the way you perceived what that person said about you, where maybe it doesn't have to be that you're disrespected, or maybe you can change how you respond and decide, "Mm, maybe this isn't on the list of things that disrespect me. I know for me, if I say something to my child and my husband says something that like the opposite of what I said to the child, I feel that that's disrespect. But there are plenty of times where I've decided, okay, maybe he's not trying to disrespect me on purpose. Maybe he has his own feelings about what was said 
to my child and maybe that's why he's saying a different way. So then I think, well, let's talk about this later, that kind of thing. So that gets into how what we got to do inside our minds in order to not snap or feel disrespected or curse somebody out because maybe seeing the other person's side and understanding their perspective. So, but still with the triggers, right? So what are some triggers that make you feel that way? Like you want to cut somebody out that you're that frustrated. So feeling disrespected is a trigger. Being interrupted repeatedly, that can be a trigger. I mean, I keep going to examples with my children because I have children and Sometimes when parents, they feel like they want to snap, right? Because <laughs> that's, it's challenging being a parent, uh, especially smaller kids. They just interrupt you, interrupt you, interrupt you. Mommy, 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 what? You know, there's actually a uh, clip from Family Guy where Stewie just keeps saying, mom, mom, mommy, mama, mama, me, mama, mama, mama. And then she's just like, Wah! you know, she's like, acts like she's losing it about to pop so yeah feel, being interrupted repeatedly can definitely make someone feel like um they're undervalued or ignored it can lead to re- frustration anger because if you're repeatedly interrupted of course for a child they're probably not listening of course but for someone who's an adult who repeatedly repeatedly interrupts you then that can make you feel undervalued or ignored because it's like well why are you interrupting me you're not listening to me let me stop you right now. So being interrupted repeatedly is definitely a trigger. So notice that if that is what's happening, if you know your triggers, then you can kind of calm down and stop yourself and recognize like, oh, this is that time. Stress, lots of stress. When you have high level stress, that can make you feel like you're just right at the edge about to pop off at somebody. And so those high levels of stress, whether it's personal or professional or something in your social situation that can reduce your patience or whatever tolerance you may have. So depending on the level of stress you might have, maybe one day somebody might do something that's disrespectful or do something to you that might usually trigger you, but you're not as stressed out that day. So it doesn't trigger you as much, but then there's maybe a time where you are more stressed out where of course it will trigger you more. So recognizing yourself, doing that self-reflection and understanding, okay, what kind of day is this? Do I need to take a break? Maybe I should not be around people too much today because I'm just going to pop off at them as soon as they say hi. Somebody could just say hi to you and if you have so much stress that you want to cuss them out because you're that stressed out. And it's it's not a them problem at that point. It's definitely a you problem. So understanding your stress levels and your triggers. Of course, um, another trigger is lack of sleep. If you're not taking care of your sleep, not getting enough sleep, Not having sleep can definitely increase your irritability, whether you are a child or an adult. Sleep is healthy. It can affect your mood, your ability to control your emotions, and just it makes you prone to outbursts and irritation. I've had that too. Of course, I'm not exempt from these things and being able to control my emotion. I've had times where I realized, oh yeah, I went to bed late. Ah yeah, I woke up early. I didn't have as much sleep as I would have um expect it or want it and then I realize I'm more irritable or prone to cut somebody out you know I don't curse people out <laughs> personally but I recognize that a lot of people curse people out but since we're talking about stopping ourselves from cursing people out that's what we're talking about but obviously cursing people out can look different it could mean that you actually are using curse words it could mean that you're tone and you're raising your voice or you're just saying things that you usually wouldn't say to that person and you might disrespect that person or you might offend them or insult them intentionally or make them feel some kind of way so cursing somebody out doesn't always mean exactly what it would mean to everybody else. So when I say I've actually snapped and been irritable sometimes when I had lack of sleep, doesn't necessarily mean I've cursed them out, but it means that I may have said something that I later regret. So recognizing those signs and triggers are important. You know, you know, other triggers, um, any type of times where you've had any personal attack or insult, obviously if somebody talking about you, talking about your your parent, your mama, your child, you know, that makes you feel like you're about to snap, like you're about to pop off. You know, if they're, somebody's undermining your value, someone's discriminating against you, someone's offending you, um, someone's being against your identity um, or talking about you in some kind of way, that is definitely, ooh, a huge trigger. And 
we're talking about how to control your own mind, right? Because you can't control other people and what they're going to say. And but you can control how you respond. Maybe there's a trigger that's going to offend you right away and make you feel like you're going to snap, but you can retrain your mind. You can retrain your mind where it doesn't get to you as much. So although that can be a trigger, it can be something you can work on. And I'm going to get that through that in a second. But first of all, we're talking about recognizing our triggers. So first, I mentioned feeling disrespected is a trigger for you wanting to snap. Being interrupted repeatedly, excessive stress, lack of sleep, feeling fairly, uh, feeling untreated unfairly. If you're being treated unfairly, someone's gotten something, some type of treatment that you didn't get, uh, some type of injustice or unfair treatment, you're going to have like some type of a strong emotion about it um, or feel defensive or, or get aggressive, you know, whether this is at work or the police pulled you over and you're just like, oh, you just pulling me over because I'm driving while black. You know, you feel like you treated unfairly. That's going to ignite some type of aggression in you or feeling like you want to snap or, you know, feeling insulted. You know, that's what's going to get to you. Right. Um, other triggers, just simply having like a tight deadline. Like if you feel under pressure or stressed out because you have to hurry up and get something done. A lot of times in the mornings for us when we're getting to have our morning routine and we need to hurry up, get the kids ready because we got to hurry up and get out the door and hurry up and drop them off to school so we can hurry up back home because we work remote, but hurry up back home so that we can work, make it to work on time, whether it's in home or out of home, then that makes you feel like you get pretty antsy. Those are things that we can fix, right? We can wake up earlier. Uh, go to bed earlier so that we can wake up earlier, that kind of thing. But sometimes you just can't fix the fact that you don't have enough time. But noticing that that's a, if that's a trigger to you, that can be helpful as far as helping you respond differently. But it definitely increases anxiety and can reduce your emotional composure if you have some type of a tight, tight deadline or some type of pressure to get something done. So we're going to get to what to do about that. But going through the triggers now, um, you know, if there's times where you've been in pain or some type of physical discomfort, nausea, whatever that's happening to you medically, that can be a trigger to you wanting to snap. Right. You know, there's many times where I've encountered people who may have acted a certain way. And I'm like, why are you acting like that? Why are you telling me off for why are you acting like that? And they're just like, oh, I'm just oh, I'm not feeling well. I have a headache, you know, and that can happen to us all where there's something physical going on, some type of a pain or discomfort, even hunger. <laughs> I was just telling a patient today that literally hunger, having low sugar is directly related to irritability and you want to snap off at somebody. There's a term hangry that we like to use in our household, but there's a biological reason for you being hangry. If you have low sugar and the energy is not going to your organs and not able to help you think clearly and things like that, you are more likely to be irritable and uh, pop off at somebody. So keeping, uh, recognizing those signs, your physical What's going on, whether you're tired, hungry, discomfort, pain, that's very important. Um, A lot of people say that like overwhelming crowds or noise can be a trigger for them wanting to pop off at somebody or cut somebody out because that that builds up their anxiety, right? So being around a lot of people or a lot of noises, if you are the type that has like the sensory perception, um, discomfort, then that can increase your anxiety and your stress level and make you uh, more irritable and more likely to snap at somebody. Ooh, so the last one here is technology glitches. Oh my goodness, that can definitely increase your frustration and angry outbursts. So like repeated technical issues, um, especially when you're under pressure and trying to complete tasks and your internet goes out and you can't do that meeting or you can't meet by zoom. Woo. (laughs) I 
I go through that for sure, um, especially being a manager slash supervisor slash medical director, whatever you want to call me. I train a lot of different people. And when technology fails you, it definitely can increase stress. Oh, my goodness. But you just got to have backup plans for things like that because technology is going to happen. At the end of the day, any of these triggers, whether it be physical discomfort or um, pressure or the deadlines or anxiety or high stress or lack of sleep or feeling disrespected, have a plan for it. You got to have a plan for it. Well, what am I going to do when these triggers happen? Yeah, they happen and it's going to happen. So why not plan for it if you know it's going to happen eventually? And having uh, practices that you do on a daily basis or multiple times a day is helpful because you can just automatically go into that thing. So we know our triggers. We know what our triggers are now for what do I need to do to stop myself from cursing somebody out? What do I need to do in my side, my mind to stop myself from cursing somebody out? So we know the triggers. What's going to trigger us to feel like we want to curse somebody out or snap? <laughs> Why are we even talking about this? Why can't we just curse somebody out? Why can't we? Well, because it's just not the right thing to do. No, that's, I mean, sure. But also it could cost you your job. It could cost you relationships. It could cost you a lot of different things, your life, your freedom, a lot of different things. If you feel like you're discriminated against, and you decide to cuss out a cop and this is the day that you ran into some racist cop and they kill you, you lost your life or they kill somebody else that you lost them, you know, that kind of thing. So that's an extreme example. But that's just, there's reasons why we need to hold our composure and not cuss, cuss somebody out. So I think if you're listening, you realize that not cursing somebody out is definitely the way to go. So what do you need to do inside your mind to stop yourself from cursing somebody out? Let's think about that. So one of the number one things that we talk about is therapists and psychiatrists and providers and giving you ideas. Counting really helps. Now, if you think about your body as having two different types of systems, there's the rest and digest system where you're so rested and you're calm, you're doing so nice. And hey, let's digest our food. We're resting so much. There's the rest and digest system and then there's the fight or flight system. So that fight or flight system kicks in, which means you're either going to run away from that trigger or that trauma or that urgent need or you're going to fight it. So we're talking about fighting, right? Cursing somebody out is a fighting thing. So when it comes to that system being kicked in, we have to slow it down. And we're not thinking. You're not thinking. When that system is kicked in, the fight or flight, you on impulse you act on what's happening right now so counting literally helps you slow that process down so you can start to think so that that those adrenaline endorphins that come into you and make you want to curse somebody out will slow down and you know whether you're counting 10 counting to 20 counting backwards whatever you need to do to trick your mind to stop and get out of that fight or flight system into that rest and digest system, it can be a great distraction, even just a minute to help your initial emotional response and to cool down. So with that counting, positive self-talk, I got this, I'm amazing, I'm calm, I'm patient, I'm kind, I have self-control. I'm gentle. I'm good. I'm actually going through the fruit of the spirit when I say those things, actually. <laughs> so anyhow, telling yourself those things, I got this, I can do this helps, especially if the reason why you want to cut somebody out is because you feel disrespected. That disrespect comes from a part of your mind that has low self-respect or low self-esteem, or you're already saying negative things about yourself. So whatever that person said to you is just validating that negative thought. So if you continue to have positive thoughts and positive self-talk, and when someone says something negative to you or something that disrespects you and you say, okay, positive thought, they just cussed me out. They just said something. I'm going to say to myself, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm patient. I have self-control. I'm beautiful. I'm loving. Do those things. I can handle this. I got this. Everything's going to be all right. Just think those things. I can manage my emotions. I have self-control. Then that helps you go a long way as well. So counting, positive self-talk, and just visualizing certain things that might help you feel happy. I've talked about the happy place. 
Imagining a scene or a place that makes you feel at peace or at calm. Incorporating some grounding techniques with that. Using your senses, your five senses to help you feel grounded in that. You know, things like this work differently depending on what it is. Like if it's a technology glitch that's stressing you out and you have some type of high um, stress and or even if it's trying to make a deadline, you can be able to stop and try to visualize something. If somebody's right in front of you, you're feeling disrespected and they're you know trying to curse you out. Maybe you need to just walk away so you can go do that visualization so that you can do that coping skill that works for you or that positive self-talk. Because at the end of the day, you're saving your mental space. And it really doesn't matter, you know, that you need to respond to that person right away or hang up the phone if it's on the phone or block them. You know, we're in the blocking stage right now. So, you know, if you need to just cut off ties with whoever is insulting you or making you feel some kind of way while you get your composure, then do that thing. Um, But yeah, really seeing the other person's side. That's another way to trick your mind, a perspective shift. Seeing their perspective, having empathy and thinking, you know, okay, seeing it from the other person's side, you know, looking at the big picture, taking a step back and not thinking of, well, what what happened from your end, but also what happened from their end? Why did they say that they hate me? Right. You know, someone says, oh, I hate you. That's going to make you get upset and make you want to curse them out because they hate you. So think about why do they hate you? See their side. Is there something that you did that was wrong? Are you actually in the wrong? See their perspective, get an understanding. And maybe you don't have to take it personal. Them hating you may not always be personal. Maybe it really is not something that you did. So you don't need to curse them out and make their day even worse because something is making their day worse. So if we're talking about a child, you really don't need to take that personal. I know my toddler, depending on what we've given him or I'm talking about the three-year-old depending on what we've given him or some thing that he wants or needs he'll say well I don't like mama I don't like dad that but then one second later he just loves us you know so you definitely can't take stuff like that personal and I've said in my job as a psychiatrist I definitely can't take personal what people say because I've heard all kinds of things and of course Ooh, you know, it can bubble up inside me, you know, when people come at me because of certain things, uh, whether the appointment started late or they they didn't get their medication and it's my fault. I didn't put the script in or something. I get parents yelling at me about different things. And I, and I know that it's not personal. I don't take it personal. Of course, it's my job and I'm professional, so I don't curse anybody out. But those same type of skills and mind tricks that you do at work that are so easy for you to calm down and not cut somebody out. Use those same skills and mind tricks when you're at home too, because it's important not to curse loving people out as well. Um, Even just as simple as labeling your emotion can be helpful. Identifying and naming that emotion. I'm angry. Okay. And it's okay for me to be angry. What do I need to do to calm my anger? So naming that can sometimes reduce the intensity of the emotion and just kind of make it like, okay, it's just, it it is what it is. I'm angry. Let's take a step back. Let's walk away from the situation or ignore the situation and then come back to it. If it's that important enough to come back to, or if it's some, something that's just like not even worth your time, then don't even come back to it because things that aren't worth your time are not worth your time. So those are some mind tricks that you can use to stop yourself from cursing somebody out. But there's some more like chill strategies that I want to mention as well before we end. So along with the counting, deep breathing is so important. And that's what helps kick in that rest and digest system away from the fight or flight. Taking deep breaths helps get you back to where you need to go. So there's a four, uh, four, seven, eight, four, seven, eight technique. There's different techniques. There's so many techniques, but four, seven, eight techniques, breathing in slowly for four seconds, holding your breath for seven seconds, and then breathing out for eight seconds. That's actually hard to do, but guess what you're not doing when you're doing that? You're not thinking about cussing that person out anymore. You are slowing your breathing down. You are focusing on your breathing. So grounding and meditating is very important because it allows you to focus on the here and now and focus on meditation. And um, I, I definitely find myself doing that, especially with parenting, When I feel like, oh my gosh, I want to snap at this little kid. I take a deep breath. I ground myself. 
I look outside, I notice the sky and the trees and the sun. And I put myself in perspective. This is a helpless child who literally needs me. (laughs) So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to snap at you because that would not be good for you and your mental health. Yay. Now I feel better because me not raising my voice, I'm not getting my blood pressure up. And then I'm taking care of my mental health. So everybody's mental health is just great because I didn't cuss you out or I didn't snap. See how important that is. (laughs) Progressive muscle relaxation is good as well. Progressive muscle relaxation is, is thinking about your muscles, tensing them up and then releasing them and relaxing. The idea here is, again, switching you from the fight or flight system to the rest and digest system because when you're anxious and in high stress your muscles just automatically tense and you need to loosen up so tensing them up and then releasing them really helps when it comes to relaxing and reducing all that tension inside your muscles so there's different videos there's videos for kids like pretend like you have an elephant stubbing on your stomach tense up your stomach and relax So there's different videos, even if you want to listen to the kid ones or the adult ones, but that's called progressive muscle relaxation. So deep breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, mindfulness, meditation, just taking a walk. I mentioned listening to music. I mentioned millions of times that I love me some Hans Zimmer. So movie scores that helps me relax. So if you need to take a breather or you need to just chill out, write about it, listen to some music. Talk to someone about it. It can be done. So think about your triggers. What are all your triggers? Do you have 10 of them? Do you have one of them? Do you have 20 of them? We all have triggers. And be ready to think about what you can do to calm your mind. What you can do in your mind to stop yourself from cursing somebody out. All right. Well, thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful. This July is Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. I've been spending time this month talking about basically emotional regulation, talking about emotional fireworks last week. This week, of course, talking about how we can control our minds and not pop off or snap at anybody and continue with the same theme this month. Thank you for listening and have a great weekend.